everyone, Night Guy back at you, and today we're going to do something a little bit different than what we normally do on our routine. Um, today we're going to be focusing what goes underneath all that body. Well, you, or your, your body, I should say. Um, so what we're going to do is a little strength and conditioning workout. Um, primarily, um, I picked a, a condensed workout. Um, Today, for example, I have to work a nine-hour shift, so um, I'd like to keep the workout short and sweet. Uh, this workout is going to do uh, very good for your posture, your stability, your core stability, your upper uh, spinal stability as well. Um, and just overall, the stability of the body for any sort of weight-bearing exercise or activity, it's going to make you uh, that much better at doing that. Knights would definitely need that, carrying around all that heavy armor and helmets and shields and swords and chain mail. Um, definitely, definitely, from personal experience, I can tell you, it, uh, it wears on you. Um, so, having a nice, strong, solid frame is great to handle that. Um, having a nice, strong, solid frame is great for any activity you're doing, athletic. Or even um, uh, labor-wise, you know, if you carry heavy boxes or you do construction, you swing a, a heavy sledgehammer carrying around heavy equipment and tools all day at your side, this workout's going to help you out with all of that. So um, in a second here, we're going to jump right into it. Like I said, this is a condensed workout. Um, I picked um, a few workouts that are uh, very low impact, but will yield a very high calorie burn, which is great, keeping those bodies nice and in shape under the armor, not just strong, but nice and lean, um, as well as uh, some workouts that are uh, very low impact so if you have any injuries um, you're not gonna have to worry too much about hurting them um, there's almost no impact on, on these workouts that I picked um, with that said full disclaimer if um, you're out there and you're watching this video and you have any uh, medical health injuries um, health or injuries that you need to, to worry about um, you know a, a bad knee torn ACL torn meniscus maybe some issues in the spine uh, the lower spine upper spine um, depending on the severity, if you've already been cleared by your physician to exercise, then you, you, you're probably good to, to proceed. If you haven't been cleared, I would um, definitely highly recommend getting clearance from a physician before you proceed, um, as well as uh, goes for any uh, health conditions, uh, any respiratory or heart issues that you have to worry about. Um, you know, please, please get checked out. Um, as well as if at any time through this workout, the pain starts getting intense, um, you know, go ahead and stop what you're doing and, and you know, uh, get some ice, wrap up the, uh, the area. Um, definitely don't try to just tough it out and walk through it. Safety is always first at our channel. We want to keep you guys in good shape to keep you out there training. All right, let's get right to it. So for the first workout that we're going to do, I'm just going to show you the, mo the, the motions. Um, it's a combination of a scroll press, I'm not scroll press, a uh, curl press, and a half squat. Um, so I combine them, I call it a scroll press. My own little uh, personal name for the workout, I don't, I don't think anyone's ever used that before. Anyhow, I'm going to start with the frontal view. You're going to take your uh, given, given dumbbells, I have my weights behind me. There goes my cat, Kiwawa, looking at the outside cats. Anyhow, uh, we're focusing on the weights, not her, but she would like all the attention anyways. Uh, if you like Kiwawa, give us, give us a like on the video and uh, we'll try to get some more with her in it. Uh, anyhow, for the first motion of the workout, you grab your dumbbells. I would recommend going light. I'm going to start this with a, a 10 pound dumbbell myself in a second, a pair of 10 pound dumbbells. And um, for the curl, we're going to be going towards the outside region. I like uh, opening up your um, rotator cuff. You got uh, some, some, some uh, posterior, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, external rotation, which also will help as you open up see it will kind of help to activate some of the muscles on the posterior, posterior chain a little more. Even though the weight is in front of you, um, opening up helps to trigger the posterior chain as well, which is a good thing. So you're standing here, and this is the first half of the motion, is you open up, you get ready, you have your dumbbells. Um, first, I'm going to do the, the top half. The top half of your body is just going to curl in and then press up in front of you. Let me turn to the side so you can see that again. You start from down here, you're going to curl in and push the weight out in front of you. I don't want the weight going straight up, 
I want to go in in front of you at an angle. Keep the keep the um, the weight, the resistance, on the, the frontal chain, your shoulders, on your upper chest. All right, so you're gonna curl out and go. Up. All right. That being said, um, let's go ahead and show you what the legs are gonna be doing. I, I mentioned there was a squat. Well, specifically, it's a half squat. I uh, like to use this as a good warm up to the next workout. Um, half squats are very good to um, gain some explosive ability. So when you have the weights at your side, this is a half squat. I'm just gonna do the half squat without any weights at the side just to show you. You just come down just low enough to get about a 90 degree bend in your knees. See that? And then you just come straight up from there. The important thing is to make sure that you come down to the full 90 degrees and I want to tell you to kind of hang in there for a second. Let's, uh, let's really, you know, put in the stress where it needs to be. The idea is to develop the strength in your glutes, your quads, and your hamstrings to be able to drive from that position. Um, yes, uh, you can do deeper squats, of course, and we are going to do deeper squats. Next, I'm actually going to superset this workout um, with a deep squat as the second workout, but we'll get to that in a second. For the first, I'm going to show you the first workout. Um, half squats, again, are very, you know, we'll talk about the benefits. Half squats are very good for um, actually explosive motion, you know. When you go to jump, you know, you don't really squat all the way down and explode up. You only come from about here, and up you go. So, we're going to work on that. Um, <clears throat> half squats are very good for beginners. You uh, have a very low risk of injury on the spine or the knees or ankles when you're only doing a half squat. So if you're out there, uh, if you're a beginner, half squats are the way to go. If you're a little more uh, intermediate or a seasoned veteran at training, um, still go ahead and do some half squats. Uh, go ahead and add some weight onto it. It's a great explosive workout. It's a great uh, routine to add into your squat routine. I wouldn't replace it, but I would definitely incorporate it. So um, that being said, that's the first part of the workout. You're gonna do a few sets of that, a few reps I should say, um, and then once you're kind of fatiguing out, remember this is just a workout exercise, so you just want to go to the point where you're starting to fatigue, you're feeling the burn a little bit, maybe you're getting a little shaky, and then we're going to go on to the second uh, superset. We're going to do a uh, drop set probably, um, more than likely, uh, you know, after doing the first set, you're going to be a little fatigued out, so we're going to do a uh, double drop, a, a double superset drop set, I guess, you're kind of doing both. We're gonna drop set and we're gonna drop down the weight a little bit. And I'm going to do a mechanical uh, superset or drop set. I'm not sure the exact term. And um, it's another form of a press with a squat. This is called a thruster. So after you did your uh, squirrel press a few times and you're fatigued out, you're gonna go into a thruster. You'll have the weight. And instead of coming all the way down here, you're going to stop right about here, you know, about as low as your body will let you go while still having the weight in front of you. And all you're going to do is in, in, in good squat form, you're going to squat down with the weight. And let's make sure those elbows meet our knees. And then you drive out of there. And once you're up top, you're fully extended. Continue driving all the way up. That's the finished range of motion. All right, let me show you that again. And down low. All the way down to so touch those knees with the elbows and then we come back up um, keep in mind once again being that you're doing a squat it's very important to focus on correct form of squats I can't tell you how many people I try to help teach squats to or I uh, know that have tried squats and they don't like doing squat workouts because they hurt themselves but when you take the time to um, sit down and go through with them the correct motion or actually watch them do their squats, you'll see nine times out of 10 that they're doing something wrong. And that's where the injury is coming from. So I can't stress enough how important it is, especially with, uh, really with any workouts, but with squats and you know the lower extremities when you're doing all those uh, muscle building workouts for your lower body to make sure your form is perfect. Don't work out with your egos. I'm gonna start with some very light weights to show you, you can get a great workout if you don't use your ego, you leave your ego at the door. Um, it's not about what someone else in the gym can do, it's about what you can do. So, anyhow, um, back to the squat routine. 
what you want to do when you're doing a squat. I'm going to do a basic squat, just with body weight right now, to demonstrate. Show you from the side view first. So as I'm squatting down, you want to keep your spine nice and aligned. I'm not leaning forward. I'm not leaning back, obviously. Attempt to try to keep it where your knees don't lunge in front of your toes too much. I mean, it's, it's going to happen a little bit. It's mechanically impossible for that to really not happen. But go nice and low. Um, speaking of butts, do not stick your butt out. Your butt's going to come back naturally because of the motion. But what it is that you're doing is you're actually hinging at the hips. I'm not actively sticking my butt out. If anything, what you want to do is take your tailbone and your pelvis and tuck it in. I know it looks a little funny, but it's the proper form of the workout. With my pelvis and hips tucked in, I go down nice and low and deep, and then I rise out of there, keeping that pelvis tucked in. All right, and that's the finished product of the workout, uh, mixed in with the upper party, upper body portion. So let's go ahead and uh, let's uh, demonstrate a set. <coughs> so first, I'm gonna grab. Just some uh, 10 pound dumbbells, don't laugh at me, yes I know they're mix matched. But we're going to first start with this curl press. See, arms out and open for the curl. And let's begin. Go down nice and low, to about that 90 degree bend I was mentioning. And you're going to curl up and drive up. And again, nice and slow. Remember, I said for these workouts, today we're doing no impact. You want to control the weight. So having good control on your weights definitely helps when you're going nice and slow. You're not giving yourself any momentum to essentially cheat through the motions. I would recommend about a two to four ratio. As I'm going down, you're trying to do about two seconds. Go about four seconds up. I can already feel my muscles starting to fatigue, starting to get a good shake. Keep going there. And there we go. Alright, that was the first set. Now I'm going to grab um, some uh, lighter dumbbells over here. I have just a pair of five pound dumbbells. That's all right, it's gonna get the job done. Now we go on to our thrusters. Down nice and deep, touch those knees, and up. Down nice and deep again, touch the knees, and up. Down nice and deep again, touch the knees, and up. That would be one completed set. I will tell you to do maybe two to three of those supersets. I wouldn't go over three. I would try to keep it at least at two to give you a good warm up. We're going to go into our next workout in a second here. But I wanted to mention uh, something I kind of overlooked at the beginning. And that is your shoulder scapular elevation. When you're doing your presses, don't shrug. Naturally, when you have the weight and the resistance coming down and you're trying to push up, your body's going to naturally want to recruit those trap muscles to get you up. That can cause great neck injuries. So you want to keep that shoulder girdle locked down through the whole motion as I'm pushing up. See, I'm not shrugging. Just pushing up. Same idea. Let me show you from the side, from the front. All right. Now, that was the first workout. For the next workout, we're going to do a um, weighted carry. Uh, like I mentioned, knights would carry very heavy armor, chainmail plates, helmet shields, spears, swords, etc. It's a lot. So, it can get very fatiguing. They also, a knight would sometimes have to march for miles. You know, uh, a foot soldier, maybe, maybe not a knight. Knights, I'm pretty sure mostly cavalry and they're on horses. But a foot soldier in middle age, in middle age combat. They have to march for miles and, and continue marching as well as battle. 
Um, so having the ability to carry, you know, all this extra weight on you is a very, very good plus to have in a you know, situation such as that. So we're going to start with the weighted carry. What I love about the weighted carry, like I said, with the other workouts, uh, most of the workouts we're doing today is a uh, very low impact, but it's a very good gainer. Very big gains out of this workout. Low risk, big gains. Perfect for what we're doing today. You know, lean, lean body, uh, firm structure, right? That's the idea. So let's get right into it. You're gonna wanna grab, for this workout, a heavy weight. Doesn't have to be a dumbbell. I have a 45 pound weight here that I'm using. It could be just any heavy weight you have. Uh, if at the house you have any heavy buckets, you have any, um, you know, jugs of water, um, old batteries, the, the lead in the batteries can really add some weight fast. Either way, my point is, this is a very good workout to overload because it's low impact, not a lot of risk of injury. So what you want to do is, is grab a weight that, yes, when you're holding the weight at your side, whether it's at one side or the other, um, it's going to be a challenge on your grip. All right? So anyways, the first workout I'm choosing is the, it's going to be called a suitcase carry, and I'm using the 45-pound dumbbell. And all you're going to do is grab that weight, hold it at your side. Um, naturally, your body's going to want to lean to the other side to counterbalance. Don't do that. Go ahead and lean into the side that it's on. If you have a longer path to walk, walk as far as you can. Um, unfortunately, since I'm doing this recording, I only have this small space. But if you only have small space in your house or in your room, just go ahead and walk back and forth. Walk, walk, walk. Turn and walk. And you're just going to continue that until your, um, your grip of your arm starts to fatigue on the one side. See how I'm kind of leaning to the side? The other idea of the way to carry is to have this continuous motion, but uh, don't let that weight swing. You don't want any swinging going on. So, all right, that's about it for the one side. Switch to the other side. So what's going to happen, I don't know if you can see when I turn, your triceps are really going to get engaged on the workout. The tricep is the muscle in the back of the arm. And uh, in order to keep this weight from swinging around, the tricep will get seriously activated, um, as well as more muscles on that posterior chain in the upper back. Just to, you know, stabilize the body, stabilize the weight, keep you from falling over, you know what I mean? As well as... All these lovely muscles in the core. Can't mention how many times I talk to people and hear them, all you hear them talk about is their core, core, core. How much, uh, how much more they'd like to have a better looking core. Um, while I like abdominal workouts, I do acknowledge that uh, I feel the faster way to getting a nice core is actually building up um, a lot of the work, the muscles around your core so to speak, through uh, free weight exercises, uh, primarily dumbbells, it forces your body to have to balance and stabilize, which is what the core really does. Like right now, for example, I can feel my abdominal muscles, my obliques, tightening up, getting good activation there. We're just going to do a little more walking back and forth. You just keep switching, up, switching arms until you... Uh, you know, fully fatigue out. Either your grip gives out on both arms or your core will give out sometimes too. I can feel my abs uh, screaming right now. <laughs> Anyhow, just keep going back and forth. I'm about done with this one. I know it may seem like a simple workout. You may be wondering... I'm going to set that down. Get some on that one. You may be wondering um, why would anyone even do a workout like that, but from just doing that small walk, my heart rate is nice and elevated. So um, that's great. Cardiovascular gains are always good. Um, I can tell you right now, my heart rate is way more elevated than I would normally get it on a simple jog or a simple, you know, biking, going, you know, steady rate, steady. Steady heart rate, steady state, that whole uh, thing. I don't really um, follow too too much of that anymore. I was I was a big fan when I was younger. I'm learning a little bit more now that 
it's not necessary really um you hear me out of breath um heart rate gets elevated the lungs are trying to keep up which is all you need to do that's really the benefits from cardio and uh here i have no impact uh no danger of falling over no danger of twisting my knees or ankles or agitating any other injuries um so i'm a big fan of this one like i said minimal risk all gains now let's go to the next workout after you do the first suitcase carry um we're gonna switch over and mind you, right, let's not do these. Let's go a little bit heavier. Those are 20 pounds, let's go with 25. So now this is 50 pounds down on me. I have uh, 50 pounds coming down on my spine, my entire body. Um, and once again, you're just gonna walk. Nice, good pace walk. Make sure to not swing the weights. Keep moving. I kinda left this one in the way, let me move that out of the way. Just back and forth. Keep your breathing going. Nice slow, deep breaths. Now I'm only showing you guys one set of each of these workouts. I would recommend doing multiple sets of each of these. You can combine them and do them back to back. You can superset them if you want to try a real challenge. But I'd recommend at least Two to, two to three sets of each of these bad boys that I'm showing you now. We did the little warm up with the uh, presses, the little uh, curl press workout, and then the thrusters. And then uh, the main meat and potatoes of this workout is actually going to be our weighted carry. Once again, you can see to stabilize when I turn those triceps, or maybe you can see a little bit better from behind, those triceps are definitely engaged. I can feel them burning now. That's about it for that one, for that set. I'm gonna set these bad boys down. Whew. <sighs> All right, what a challenge. Um, I have two more workouts to show you, so bear with me, we're almost done here. Um, I'm not gonna go through the full workout. I'm only doing one set of each just to demonstrate to you. But remember, you wanna do multiple sets. I'd say at least two to three of each of these workouts. Call it a day. Get yourself your protein shake, get yourself you know, your steak, whatever it is you eat afterwards you know, uh, re rehydrate and enjoy your day. Um, speaking of nutrition, um, I didn't mention before the work, the warm up. not only is it very important to do a warm up exercise, um, but um, you wanna pregame your, uh, your athletic uh, routine or event or competition, anything. You wanna pregame way before you even do the warm up. And what I mean by that is nutrition and hydration. So you're going to want to make sure, let's say this is your first early morning workout. You wake up in the morning, go ahead and down a full glass of water. Um, it's better to be hydrated an hour or two before, but, you know, we work with what we can. Um, same goes with nutrition. If you're feeling like you got a hole in your stomach, get something to eat, you know. Um, don't try to work out with, with no, no energy in there, no nutrients, no proteins, no carbohydrates. You know, you're not going to be going anywhere. Make sure to, to definitely try to get some nutrition in you. Try to eat, try to drink enough water, and you're good to go. Let's keep it moving. All right, rest time's up. Um, on the subject of rest time, I would recommend doing about a minute rest time in between each of these uh, sets. Um, you know, um, after the warm-up set, I normally take about two minutes before I go into the regular workout. Just to let the body recover a little more because it's only a warm-up set. But then once you're, you're full throttle into the workout, minute rest time. Each set. Sometimes I go down to 30 seconds. I say don't go over a minute and don't go under 30 seconds. That's my rule of thumb. Keeps the intensity nice and high. Keeps the duration of the workout nice and short, which, you know, we, we most of us are out there working and you can't be working out all day. You know, you got, you got plenty of errands to run and chores and responsibilities. So let's get you back to it. Honestly, uh, I dragged this rest time out a little bit more than I should have, but it's for the instructional purposes. So. Next workout we're going to do is another weighted carry. However, for this workout, I would recommend going just a little bit lighter because this one is going to be an overhead carry. You're just going to hold the weights up, straight up. Try to get your body stretched out as much as you can. Think, uh, think pencil. And we're just going to walk. Same thing.
we're just gonna walk. We walk and turn and back. And walk and turn and back. And walk and turn. Oh man, my shoulders are already fatiguing out a little bit here. Maybe it's from the curl presses and the thrusters, but uh, either way, I'm starting to shake a little bit. All right, now you set those down. That's one more set. And then I'm going to show you next um, the last portion of the workout. Um, this one's going to be a little more challenging. Um, speaking of challenges. For any of those workouts you've seen where I'm going back and forth, what you could try to do is uh, go in one direction with your weights and then just stopping and walking backwards. That can be a real challenge. But for beginners, start with just walking one direction, like so, turn, and go the other direction. If you're a beginner, you may not have the coordination or the balance to properly walk backwards, and we don't want you falling over anything and hurting yourself. So save that. Uh, you know, walking backwards on the way to carry until you get a little more advanced. Um, anyways, now into the, the final workout. For this one, it's another overhead weight, weight to carry, but we're going to involve some lateral movement. So all you're going to do is put the weights up, and I'll start over here so you can see. Step to the side and close.